monster from 12,000 fathoms. <laughs> How many entries we got? 151 models. Not sure how many people. Be careful, you're out on my dining room table. Is that for real? That's right. Did you actually start the magazine in your house? Yeah, we did probably about the first two or three issues out of off of my dining room table. And it started as a just kind of as a a dare almost. We were talking with an artist who said, uh, well, why don't you do a car magazine? And we said, well, there's too many car magazines and there's not really a market for it. And he said, well, why don't you do a car mag model car magazine? I didn't know he was into model cars at the time. So we started talking about model cars and one thing led to another. And I think that was in about January and by May we had the first issue done. Yeah, the first issue done. The world famous interview with uh, Bob Barnett from Oklahoma City. Norman, Oklahoma, actually. Norman, Oklahoma, yeah. Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, Didn't he play for the Bears? Bears <laughs> this is your second year here, Bob, isn't it? Second year here. I mailed a truck three years ago and it's my second year up here in person. I'm not going to miss it again. I love it. What are you doing in 1985 here? Really? Really? I brought a Mercury out. A Mercury? A Mercury. Are we doing another replica oh, custom? It's a replica like custom. Why don't you show it to us? Okay. Interior. All the big touches. How'd you do the pleating? You were explaining that a little while. Uh, that is uh, approximately eight inch strip thigh ring. Each one is individually super glued down. Thank you. Curve, paper the edges, and then uh, super glue each one of them down. It has uh, six plates in the headliner and a uh, package tray, seats. There's a uh, total of 178 plates in there. And each one of these is a separate sheet? Uh, each, each one. This is Tim Boyd, for those of you who have never seen him before. Tim, uh, obviously with the Street Rider t-shirt, uh, writes for Street Rider. He's also written for a uh, number of the modeling magazines over the years. Tim's one of the board of directors for GSLMCC, and you've been involved for how many years, Tim? Uh, probably five years, I would say. You Maybe know? all the way back to, I guess I offer Mark advice on the first one, but, uh, and each year I get a little bit more active than I attended the last four. I help you judge uh, number three and number four. That's, uh, my, my involvement has primarily been in, 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 as an advisor to Mark. How would you describe this or characterize this content? Um, oh, it's, it is, uh, it's the ultimate for model car builder at this point in time. Um, you win this contest and you won the most uh, uh, heavily uh, competitive and really uh, nationally organized contest that, that exists right now. This is Bob Johnson from Monogram Models. Let me see if I can back up a little bit so your face isn't so big. <laughs> What do you what, uh, how long have you worked for Monogram, Bob? I've been there since 1973, Terry. Came out of the Air Force and went to work for Monogram. Well, what's your background? A mechanical uh, engineer? Or? No, I got a product design degree from the Institute of Design in Chicago, and uh, probably more than educationally, I've been a model car builder since I was about seven years old. Is that right? I think my first kit was one of the Ravel Buicks that had the multi-piece bodies on them and they yeah. were 30 second scale. Boy, they go back a ways. That's a while back. Yeah. yeah well, what have you worked on at Wiener? <laughs> I worked. I worked there really as a draftsman and a designer, and worked on the 30 Packard, worked on the uh, Mac Bulldog doing drawings, uh, designed the 53 Corvette diecast, designed the 57 Corvette, uh, designed the 66 Malibu. Well, we're talking with a recent arrival at uh, GSL MCC. This is Bob Johnson from Monogram Models. He's brought us a couple of uh, yes. box art models. One of them is the new Mustang GTP, and the other one's the uh, 
Billy Meyer Chief Auto Parts Mustang Funny Car, which is a departure from Monogram. They haven't built funny cars in quite a few years. <coughs> you guys into Fords or something, Bob? <laughs> yeah. Are you into Ford? <laughs> but they won't do it First on race day, right? Yeah. Well, that's I'm not what I heard. There's, there's one advantage to our GTP car. Right our there. engine stays together a lot longer than the real thing. <laughs> It's guaranteed for more than 20 laps or 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Jesse, how are we today? We are tired. That camera's pretty damn heavy. Uh, I feel like one of the modern artists who has turned the camera on himself. The man behind the camera, the mysterious voice, is now seen clearly by all of those viewing this tape. I don't know how good that is. <laughs> Oh, it's not bad so far. I've enjoyed your interviews and certainly your help in chronicling this event. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I, you know, one of the things about doing this tape was that you got to spend a lot more time talking with individual people. Um, for me, the biggest part of this contest is always the people that you run into. I'm pleased to welcome each of you here tonight to our dinner, now that we've all finished eating, especially the far table. <laughs> I, I am very pleased to introduce our guest of honor tonight, who, as you know, is Ed Big Daddy Roth. There surely can't be any one of us who have grown up in this hobby without having some knowledge of him and probably an awful lot of affection. We grew up seeing his cars. We loved his, the model kits that were made. We all built a rat fink or two. And I don't know that there have been many people in our hobby who have made a greater contribution to our, to our mutual feelings and love for this hobby other than Ed Roth. And I don't want to say very much more. I'd just like to turn the time at this point over to Ed. And I'd like to welcome him with a big hand from all of us. Before I start, I just, for my own curiosity, how many of you are involved with Detroit uh, anything, design, department, mechanics. I know Tim is, sort of. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> I'm going to start out by telling you a little bit about my background because unless you understand where I'm coming from, you won't understand why I did the things that I did. And a lot of people don't ever get onto this because I never hardly write about it or tell anybody because the press could go crazy with something like this. But <clears throat> my mom and dad came from Germany just before the war, Second World War. And uh, as a kid, I was raised with these little booklets about how neat the German guys were with all their tanks and stuff. So when I went to school, the war was just coming on, the Second World War was just coming on. We used to sit there and draw the Jeeps and the, the blimps and the, all the neat P-41 aircraft. And I know you guys grew up too drawing stuff in your notebooks, but we concentrated on that. We didn't have monsters yet. We had like Popeye, Mickey Mouse, and, and, the, and the war stuff. So <clears throat> as the war came along, you couldn't buy or sell a car for love or money because they took all the cars and made tanks out of them, guns. They wanted you to con contribute any kind of pots and pans you had extra. And if you did get a hold of a piece of chewing gum or cigarettes, they wanted you to fold a little aluminum uh, foil around the cigarettes and put it into a ball. We'd save that and balls of string. And we'd have, all give it to the war effort, they called it. So you couldn't buy or sell a car. So we were to go to high school. We were sort of forced right after the war to go to the junkyards and comb out what we wanted to drive to school and it was I mean there was hardly anything in the junkyards left you know we're lucky to get a Model A and be able to put a V8 engine in it then as I went in the service I remember this one picture that was in Hot Rod magazine of Henry Ford and he was bent over like this and he had a sledgehammer in his hand he was beating his 4140 you remember that one Jim I'm saying to myself what is this guy doing with this deck lid and he and he beats it in and nothing happens to it and they had this new thing called fiberglass I'm saying to myself, boy, that is some real neat stuff because I could really build a neat roadster out of that. Because after all these things we built, they were just like weld them together and channel them and chop them, anything you could do to, to, to make it work. The way I started 
building these fiberglass cars was uh, I heard a I heard a guy say, well, they built a couple of cars out of fiberglass. One was a Shadoff Special. Um, there was a couple other things done in fiberglass, but it was like an experimental thing. It's like if a guy says to you, tungsten, right now, it's a, you, you build up this image in your mind about tungsten or about carbon uh, fiberglass or these new far-out products. Well, those... Our next class is the light commercial vehicle, pickup trucks and vehicles of that sort. The first place award goes to the king of dirt, Mr. Terry Jesse, <laughs> for his cowboy Cadillac. Best in show. Again, we came down to, I believe, three models, Mike? Rick? I think it was three. They all had strengths, they all had weaknesses, as all models do. We looked through them very carefully. There were three extraordinary models. Never seen models so good, in fact. Never ever, no matter who built them. Let me tell you the three we looked through. No, I better not. <laughs> three models that we thought were equivalent, that stood out for their excellence. The first was Mr. Vetrano's 40 Ford. Second was Mr. Jesse's Cowboy Cadillac. The third was Jarris Watson's 36 Ford sedan station wagon, the scratch-built replica stock. We ran around the bush on this, my friends. I don't think we finished till shy of 4 o'clock this morning. It's a difficult decision when you make these choices, because no matter what you do, someone will be unhappy, someone will be disappointed. But nevertheless, we have the job of making a choice. And we thought on balance, after a very careful review of the research done with this model, that Jarris Watson's 36 Ford sedan ought to be best of That gentleman, as all the rest, impressed me a great deal. It was a very difficult choice. Neither of the other two gentlemen in the running ought to feel slighted in the least. Any one could have won. Okay, tell us what that says. What it says? Yeah, tell us what it says. That Kisa this, can't read it on the <laughs> <laughs> this, temp this marriage is temporarily interrupted due to the Greater Salt Lake Model Car Championship, and it has been for the past two weeks. <laughs> and just whose wife are you? I'm Joan Schmidt's wife. Okay, thanks for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Warm room for air. Right. That's like when you do an eight scale car. It's expected that, like, say, the butterflies work off the gas pedal. You know, everything. You know, you have the room to do it. You, know? you have the room to do it. Yeah, and then again, you don't have the room to do it. Then again, it's like one thing leads to another. And now, you know, it's like, um, I like the 16 scale. You know, it's sort of um, not much available. And it's the same with the eight scale. And, uh, a lot of the stuff I make is totally scratch built. It's sort of a pain in the butter. Alrighty, we're here with uh, Bud Anderson. Cat from AMT, had to use that line. X Cat. <laughs> X Cat, okay. Right. X Cat from AMT. <laughs> uh, I know there's been a lot written about your past. I want to kind of talk about your present and, and your future. Uh, what are you doing nowadays? I'm the national sales manager for a firm down in uh, Fullerton mm -hmm. in automotive parts. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that excited about it because there's nothing creative as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And you know, just putting a sales program together and putting representatives together around the country. And it's just an intern thing, you know, honestly, Roy. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not something I'm married to. Are you looking to get back into the, to the mall car party? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we touched on it last night in that rap session, and uh, I'm going to have a meeting after this thing is over. And uh, some guys approached me here a few months ago about going ahead, and because there seems to be so much interest, you know, uh, in what I do and so forth, which I really, really appreciate that, and I have no problem with it. And so a couple of guys mentioned, you know, why we sit there and just let a bunch of the guys know around the country, you know, if they want to get in and uh, get involved, you know, I'm not saying another Bud Anderson company or so, 
and that is to have them send in, you know, two or three thousand dollars a piece, but they'll become the stockholders uh -huh. and raise, you know, say two, two and a half million dollars. And if we didn't reach that financial goal, they'll then send all the money back. Uh, but what we'd do then, that would enable us to go ahead and buy a brand new item with a total new concept in, in model building, as you guys know it today. I know that, you know, you guys have mentioned what I did when I left AMT and then started IMC. Mm -hmm. That was quite a, you know, departure, if you will, in, in the design, if you will, of models. Right. Well, what I want to do now, if you guys thought that was neat, and I'll put the other stuff on the trailer. <laughs> I mean, that's just how far I'm ahead now. And it's only because, you know, there were so many things I wanted to do over the years, but I couldn't get the management to do it. Uh, and, and fighting these new product committees and a bunch of nine to five people who don't build. Well, how in the hell can you sit there and design something for a market when you don't even understand the market, you don't even partake in it? Right. Exception. And I've got to tell you, I am so proud. I swear to God, I am so proud to have been a part of it. To watch year by year by year and have it turn into something like this. I mean, hey, they talk about the Oscar. This is the Oscar event for Model Car right here in Salt Lake City. Good line. I mean, good yeah. on. Uh, that describes it very well. Very well. That's just the way I feel about it. Yeah. It really does. It, it, uh, uh, the, the quality of the things. People around the country cannot conceive. The, the photographs won't show. Right. Okay, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but seeing them hard to get. I've got to stimulate you guys to, exactly. for your enthusiasm, so it carries over your enthusiasm bubbles like it was 25 years ago to your younger brother and or your, your children for them to want to build something. Okay. The why one of the reasons we came with the Craftsman series so the younger guys can build something that looks good, but they can't build a three-in-one. Can I second that, John? My little, I've got a little boy, he's 12 years old. He likes to build model cars, too. You know what he's building? He's building monogram snap kit Daytonas and Z20. Photographs is not the best way to go. It's like you said, you really can't send the model in. Well, you know, the Revell contest, though, when we had 10,000 cars that came in as finalists that arrived at 4223 Glencoe Avenue down there by the truckload, okay? <laughs> we had a warehouse, must have had probably 30,000 square feet. We took everything out of it and <laughs> set up pieces of plywood. They probably spent more money on plywood than did on prizes. Okay, here we have the uh, the Pegasus done by Mike Johnson. Won the pack to a Revell contest back in the 60s. And uh, Mike is building a little more updated version uh, which he hopes to have done by next year. Answer. So I suppose your eyes are 80s technology, simple uh, comfort in the vehicle, pure than the Serie Nights. It still has a performance close to what the old answer. Okay. Last night we videotaped the news people videotaping. Today we'll videotape Dale Angel videotaping. Smile, Dale. <laughs> You're on tape. Either the way the tool is, what we'd have to charge for it, or the pieces. The 64 Ford, a lot of people heard we were going to do it in 87, and because of the way the tool was, we couldn't. But we did have this Craftsman series available. All of this is basically a promo that's been converted to a kit. Uh, it even has the engraved chassis. So what we decided to do was to test the saleability of the Blue Printer, which is our own publication. And so we started a couple, about four months ago, advertising this model from the Blue Printer. And it's done very, very well. It has probably, I think, around 15 pieces to it. But what you can do is combine it with the 63 Ford uh, that we came out with. So you burnish it down with the 53 Ford. Cut around. 
Give me the camera. Know, <laughs> Somebody asking questions. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Dip the straw in. And <laughs> I can't get over the size of this this year. This is this is great. This place is jam packed. They're running out of space on the tables. It just makes it a little scary to think about the 10th anniversary show. You know, we're gonna have to get a bigger place, more tables. It's gonna be great. So come too big. You'll eat anything, won't you? Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, they put a childproof wrapper on Larry's, he can't get it off. <laughs> How are we supposed to concentrate with all this noise? You're not? You're not. Major body components. Major body components. Those would be the easiest, right? Together, our car and they stuck in a tank. Oh, good. Now your part shot across the table in this pile. Everybody else piles up. <laughs> Have you identified the kit yet, anybody? I haven't got the damn thing out of the bag <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know what type of transportation it is? Uh, it is an airplane, huh? It's a boat. It's a boat. Yeah, for a boat, it is anything. Big enough to be a boat. Big enough to be a boat. What? <laughs> What is it? Is it a bull? Come on, who's guest book? Oh no, not these! <laughs> Bruce has got experience at this. He's got the interior and the roof on. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know mine's not a boat now. What is it? It's a Batmobile. I wish it was. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. It's a Lincoln Continental. Continental. 40 Ford. 40 Ford. Who said Continental? Who said Continental? Lincoln Continental. All right, you get the booby prize. You have to assemble the other four when they get started. Everybody knows. This is not fair. I got to put this here together before. I don't know all the parts. Actually, the prize is you get to keep the kit in your building. Oh, God. Thanks. After you chopped it up and blew it. Let's see. You must use all the parts. Right. I want to see hey, here's the instructions. I want to see what he put the plastic bags. They are not in brand. Wow, let me see. Yeah, yeah, there's no problem. There's no cheating. There's no, no bumps on it. <laughs> Get a shot of that. Hey, I only got two tires. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You done yet, Bruce? Yeah. I don't think it's a little bit of glue. Is it even more? No. No. You don't think you can pull the How much time do we have anyway? I got caught one. Put another 13 minutes. Well, we got to stop. Ken, the glasses are getting fogged up. <laughs> Did you bring the airbrushes in? What for? The airbrushes. I just bought a can of spray paint. Oh, okay. All of that. Well, John's just glad we're not doing this to an AMT. No Okay, we're back. It's three hours later. Let's see how these fall car builders are doing. Yeah. <laughs> Behind it. Go down again. Straight there. There it is. Oh, nope. Tell right. Man, that's good glue. I'm getting high on it over here. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that'd be correct. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> One way to keep it from getting dirty. Sun bleed never bleach it out when you put it under the car. All right. <laughs> This guy's, this guy's trying to someone stealing his parts. <laughs> well, as long as they're only little parts. <laughs> That's all he knows. Yeah, rear engine. Yeah, rear engine. That's cute. Man, where's the hood? Your hood probably got stolen like everybody else's. Well, he's got it. No, he doesn't. Did they change the all right? Oh, that was totally <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
call them helicopter parts. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew that part was there. I knew it was there. <laughs> hey, you know those kids are gonna be invaluable when you get through with them. Invaluable, is right. Pay top dollar. We're gonna take them into the judges' stand and see if they'll judge them. First letter was wrong. Is there gonna be a slammer? No motors. <laughs> That's cheating. If you glue the hood shut, it's fair, isn't it? I think we have a uh, new definition for slam. You know, the weird part about it is T-Bird looks just like that. He's <laughs> 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 finally coming through. We took Bray on high school, didn't you, Bob? <laughs> Why is that? Sure looks like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to find what I'm looking for. <laughs> Now that's something new. Luckily, there was an outcome. It takes too long to get there. Okay. Thanks a lot for stealing the wheel. Get off a flight in here. Let's see. Are you shaking for it? Damn. I feel like you guys aren't being totally upfront with us. Yeah. <laughs> make you, yeah. think that. you are. <laughs> Did anybody tell these people we coated the parts with rat poison? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's okay, the, the poison parts are color coded. <laughs> just, generic, just don't eat the red stuff. I've never had any magic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. That's a classic. Yeah. Uh, Not bad. Not bad. Three minutes. Yeah, I got my parts cleaned up. Oh, nice. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Body filler. Uh, yeah, I need some body filler. Did you send off the fiberglass? Did you send off yes. the fiberglass? Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. give me a file. file. I can't find my interior tone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, he's got two, so. What the heck? That's the subject. Cut off. Nah, I gotta get the engine on. Pull the fender. Look at the engine on. <laughs> no, the guy that can get the model on will stand after he's done. Get <laughs> two minutes. This is the scoop. That's more. Two minutes. That's just the wrong way. That's the funniest side trim I ever saw. That's a snort wheel. That's a snort wheel. No, this is the one. This is the A9 piece. Uber Come on, Bob, you're falling way behind these other guys. <laughs> Minute 30. Right one's on the outside, Bob. <laughs> How can yours have six pipes? Understood that. That's the way you can. That's exactly what you can make. No, no, no. These are just the generic box art. They're a demonstration. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Way before the model. Yeah. Well, actually, the other two are going to be like parts. You know, they just run. Oh, here, turn it. But they run. Yeah. You'll yeah. be able to mix and match. They were. They were. But it's in the other side. Why didn't Monogram put yeah. the other kids yeah. spring and the axle yeah. together? One minute. Oh, that's what it was good. The negative is all these bits will be sold for $50 each. Yeah, right. Thanks a lot. Because you're all hurt. I've never seen before. Yeah. Okay. Now you got to put Which one you collect? I did some decals on that one. Maybe a custom drill.
<laughs> How much are they going to sell the finished products for? Oh, they want to collect this piece. Ah, they go in. They go in there. Museum model. Museum down here. Thirty seconds. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> oh, yeah. What they don't have is they've got interval. Wait, guys, get the engine out. Let us know when it's ten seconds so we can count them down. Yeah, go count them down. Okay, who's going to do the worst job? Somebody get a pen. Fifteen and mark seconds. Names on the top before they take their blindfolds off. Ah, uh, something just can. broke. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, something just broke. Uh -oh. Five. Oh, no. no time. Yeah. Just pour the glue on. Yeah, right. it in the box. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be sticking my hands up too. Don't stick them anywhere else. Dry. Yeah. Usually, my fingers get this thing. Oh, Miles, I got Bill. You take off from my pool? Yes, take off from my pool. Don't get blue all over. How many? Oh, right. Right. Hey, you got the windshield in. Hold it up, guys. Is that what you thought it would look like? You know, Bruce, that's the best one you've ever done. Recall. Oh, well, the first one I could is find my damn wheel. Something swinging. <laughs> now do it again. It's off when we were all um, young, younger than we are now. And with the help of Greg Struhar, Tom Gillian, and some effort from me, we are pleased to show to you, Jim, probably the first time in a number of years, fully restored Dodge Fevers 1 and 2. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> So while we have to do that one from Texas, it's regulated by the uh, Texas Stereotype Committee. <laughs> on balance, on balance, we decided that Fred, you've done it. Beautiful job. Thank you. Gorgeous model. Thank you. We're happy to give you this and your word envelope and your plaque. And some air. And some air. <laughs> Not a whole lot. There's cold air outside. Congratulations, Fred. It's a gorgeous model. We encourage you to come back next year and try and do it again. Thank you very much. Take care. The front seat slides on a track. I have to slide it to the back in order to get both front doors closed. So that worked out real well. Decade of excellence. Describe your car for us. I want to turn it off. I haven't described it. Okay. Uh, first, introduce yourself. My name is Augie Escano from Miami, Florida. And tell us a, a brief history about this car. Okay, basically the car is a 32 Ford Roadster with an XKE rear end. Uh, it's a street rod. Something that in the period of 1963 to 1964, trying to put more modern things into an old roadster, like disc brakes, a few other things, Weber carburetors. And what did this car win? <laughs> this won the 1964 Revell Nationals. And tell us a little bit about that, that impressive display. The display was built so that they could send it around in a car show in the year of 1964. And where has it been since 1964? It's been in my dining room. 
<laughs> this is my wife's baby. <laughs> it's sort of an heirloom, and it looks like even the kids, they want to keep that in the family. Great. What um, made you decide to bring it to Salt Lake City? Well, Mark talked me into bringing it so that they could see what the original car looked like. And you haven't really been involved with that hobby this, all this since, time? Since 1964 mm -hmm. it was the last time. Easier. Great. Thanks for sharing your car with us. Well, Another, we're all real familiar with uh, Mark Gustafson's Macari, and he brought it with him here to Salt Lake City. Uh, brilliant red paint. You know, eight hours worth of work went into the. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong car. Wait a minute. Oh, this is Mark's car. Oh. Roy, <laughs> I'd like to point out something to you. Sure. This is actually the one that Mark built. Uh huh. After he saw this one, this was built for him. Oh, and, and this is Mark's, and that inspired him. Yeah, that inspired that one. to build this one. This one's Mark's. I see. You notice the nice paint? Yeah. Yeah, you can tell. That's all. You're gonna. It's Eight hours of work. Yeah, yeah, on this fender. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Dern. You're welcome. <laughs> now let's look at the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I had the honor of making a very special awards presentation to Tim Boyd. And fortunately, during that presentation, I inadvertently produced the wrong notes. <laughs> and uh, made a fool of myself. This year, I've taken precautions. I don't think of this what the wrong note is about. <laughs> anyway, what we want to do this year is acquaint you with two new organizations that have formed in our hobby. And the first is the Worldwide Institute for Modeling and Plastic, and the second, due to the recent increase in diorama popularity, is the National Establishment for Realistic Dioramas. These organizations <laughs> will <laughs> euphemistically be referred to as WIMP and NERD. <laughs> <laughs> the goals, uh, of course, most of them are obvious. Firstly, is uh, to apply generously to an infested area. I did it again. I was looking for the moose convention. <laughs> this is a model car contest. And in the contest, we have a number of classes. And each class is assigned to a separate table so that all the models in that class can be in the same area. For example, on one table, we've got the testing class. Can you tell me the names of the guys that won? I'm going to see. OK. Who won first? What one second. <laughs> That's what I want to find out. You want to tell me the names of the winners in this class? I'm telling you. Who won first? What one second. I don't know one third. Do you know the guy's names? Yes. Well, then who won first? Right. <laughs> I mean the guy's name that won first place. Who? <laughs> the guy in first place in the custom class. Who? You tell his name is being straight. <laughs> the guy that won first. Who won first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Who won first? Well, I'm asking you who won first. That's the man's name. <laughs> That's whose name? Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead and 
tell me? Who? <laughs> the guy that won first. Who? The first place winner. Who won first? <laughs> <laughs>
So I walked up to the guy that in the first place and shaped naturally's hand. You walk up to the guy in the first place. Then I shake whose hand? Natural. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me. Don't get excited. I walk up to the guy that won first place trophy. And who won? And he better win it. <laughs> All right. I'll get excited. Just calm down. So who builds a better model than what? And what's better than I don't know? And you know what else? I don't care. <laughs> what did you say? I said, I don't care. <coughs> That's the guy that won the street machine class. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that would be the natural part of our program. Who? <laughs> 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 announced this because this is the award, which is the culmination of the efforts of all of us. It is our custom every year to <laughs> disclose the three top models for the Best of Show award. We do this in order to describe to you the great passion, the great dedication to service, I hope that each of the judges brings to, the, bring to their job. It is not an easy decision. It is not an easy decision. These models are beautifully done. They exhibit craftsmanship and skill that would be hard for anyone, including the builder perhaps, to duplicate. The top three models this year were Dave Abel's Cat, Larry Booth's 49 Ford Super Coupe, and Steve Catherine's Belly Tanker. And we went, we talked for many hours. I don't know that we've spent that much time, Mike, in a number of years. And we went through it. For those very few of you who are in the room, you understand the heated and candid debates that went on. But in the end, of course, as it must be, all decisions must be made. And we are very pleased to say, very pleased to say, that the Best of Show Award for the 11th Annual GSL International Model Car Championship will go to Steve Catherine. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, that's it. <laughs> Well, what, is, what is it? 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 is the second of the two Dodge Fevers that was the feature in the magazine, the Hop 2, going over about three different issues. So, you want to know that? Yes, why don't you bring that over? It's buried in the corner. <laughs> I'll walk you through these models briefly and tell you what they are. I can see what we're talking but the short guys are right here. Yeah. No. Oh, wow. Original monogram monogram. Yeah. That's great. The name T through John O'Neill has donated this note, but this is built in the very first test shot, which we'll also put in the museum. The version of this appeared in the box. Actually, Frank Grill. He's going to buy now, let me walk you through this if I could. My next life. Augie, why don't you tell us something? Augie has lent us two of these models. This is the Black Bandit that won Best Detail or something like that. Master Craftsman Award. In the 1963 Revell Pactor Contest. Augie, tell us a little bit about this one. No, yeah. Right, this car here is the first scratch build car I ever built. It was the first one I'd built out of metal. It was all scratch built on metal, you know, with working steering and such as that, with working shocks and things like that nature. First nickel silver bucket seats. Uh, this was built in 1961. So that was the first car I'd ever built for it basically a contest. This was a 40 Ford body, which I sectioned lightly and chopped it a little bit and just moved things around. And then did it with a soldering iron back then. You just cut everything up and melted the plastic back together. And the me method I used to use is you take the soldering gun, cut it down the door, and while it's hot, you take the piece out and then you squeeze it back together. <laughs> so you were actually just welding it back. And it, and this was a, a lacquer paint job. The original paint job on it was enamel. It totally, in a box, faded away almost. It was packed for enamel. So I had to read His retirement from Revell is beginning the next phase, next phase of his career in the hobby and modeling industry as a consultant to the entire industry. This is Mr. Robert Johnson. I've had the pleasure of coming before, and I can't think of a better way to wrap up 17 and a half years in this business as part of this business than with a bunch of car folks. It's, uh, you people are a real special bunch of people to me, and, and now I have a chance to be one of you rather than a spokesman. From here on out, call Sexton, the number is 390 <laughs> Uh, he'd be happy to take your calls. I'm out of there after Tuesday. <laughs> now, quite honestly, I've had a lot of fun over the years at Monogram and Revell, uh, starting in the design department, uh, really seeing all ends of the way a kit goes together. Now we have to show. We agonized a lot over this, and you guys are in the room, you know how difficult it was. We looked at three or four models this year, and as our custom, I'll tell you what they were. We looked at Mr. Brown's <coughs> car, we looked at Mr. Schwenkler's car, we looked at Mr. Escano's car, 
and Mr. Kaplan's car. Those were the four vehicles in our judgment were eligible and in the running for the Best of Show Award, the 1991 GSL. We took our little mirrors and our toothpicks and our probes and our flashlights and looked at them intricately, turned them over. I'm afraid it may have broken the pacer tube, but not intentionally. And we were very pleased to announce that for the 1991 GSL Best of Show Award, Augie Piscon. Yes. say a few words about the Oakland Roadster Show diorama. About six years ago, some people started uh, tossing around an idea to build a model of the Oakland Roadster Show in 125th scale. Uh, as it turns out, the next five years were spent refining those, uh, these ideas. Uh, then Ken Hamilton, after being asked to do the construction, spent the, the last year turning those ideas into what we are about to see here today. This is a very special uh, project which honors an important part of Americana, that being the history of custom cars and hot rods and the history of model car building. This is a serious project that not only shows how far model car building has come, but also shows how far our hobby will go. And it shows that a project of this scope can be carried off by a group of dedicated people from around the country. Today we wish to honor and to thank everyone who has had a hand in bringing this diorama to completion. With a very special thanks going to Bob Barnett, Bob Wick, Mark Gustafson, Mike Adams for transportation from the East Coast, and to Ken Hamilton for the 500 plus hours that it took to build this model. substantial and significant contributions to our hobby in constructing the 1964 Oakland Roaster Show diorama. Now, two of these will be prepared. We will take photographs now that this has been unveiled, and a large wooden plaque will be created. This will be on the top with a photograph of the diorama below it. One will be given to you. We will need more place and move this down. This room is essentially the literature room, our research area. This is a very complete collection of every publication, at least that I'm aware of, that's been published in this country. 
uh, for, if our Australian friends that are here today know of anything down there, we'll try and collect those too. Um, these are all inventoried in a large computer database that Mr. Benton has assembled, who sits right behind you by the computer, has assembled uh, in order that people who wish to do research can come in here and get access to all of this. All of the information contained in these magazines, uh, articles, authors, and the like, will this summer be cross-referenced on Mark's program. So that you could come in here, for instance, and call up Jim Keeler and find a reference, a specific reference in here and in the uh, file cabinet before this young man here, to each and every document that, that is uh, concerned with that particular person in that case. Or you'll be able to call up the name of a particular model and find out where it's shown. These three display cases as last year, with monies raised at last year's show, incidentally, where Kmart was very gracious to sell these to us at a discount. And so we have placed all models in here. Each model has a notation in front of it to briefly explain what it is, what its importance has been historically. In that connection, Mr. Augie Escano will be letting us borrow his 1964 Ravel Pactra National Winner for display and pick up two others of his uh, that have been on display for a year. We rotate things through, for instance. So I urge you to kind of look around. Box art models are back here in the corner. Behind you we have memorabilia, odd bits and ends of old kits and, and glue bottles and putty tubes and about every other thing you can imagine. You gotta use your imagination a little bit. You gotta use your imagination a lot. Okay? This is airport security. That's really all you really need to know. It's airport security. Morning, Junior. Good morning, Bubba. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, the machine broke. We got a frisk on each other. Way up, James. <laughs> morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning. 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 Just kind of hold it right there. Hands <laughs> up a little bit here. You may have to do something with that, but I have a You ain't hiding nothing under your TP, are you? <laughs> Where are you headed today, sir? I'm looking for micro balloons. Oh, boy. What's that? Have a nice flight. <laughs> Hold it right there, partner. We're having a little problem with our candles this morning. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
fragile. That's not fragile. That's not fragile. It's not fragile. What is this stuff here? Now, you have to explain this stuff to us a little bit. Well, it's Oh, what are you, Bob? 
You must be from out town. We're going to have to take a look inside the coat here, I'm afraid. I'm going to have to look down. Can you hold that? I'll hold that. <laughs> It's clean. How nice play. philosophical discussions about what was good modeling, what ought to comprise good modeling, and who does the best job of it, relatively speaking. <coughs> it was very difficult. We went back and forth time after time after time. There were three or four, were four models which in any other contest would have been clear winners, but you have to make a choice. You expect us to name someone, and some model has the best. I want you to understand that it's tough. We know all of you, we are concerned about you, but we are obliged to choose the model which best exemplifies the sense of scale and realism and convincing, uh, which presents a convincing attitude about what good modeling is. And after a lot of hard work, frankly, and a lot of soul searching. Rush went to his Honda R. Yeah! Yeah! Very well done. 
Look up above, Bob, if you would. Oh, you can't see it. This is our way of honoring you, Bob, for all you've done for the hobby and for this diorama and the museum. Well, thank you. That means a great deal. Thank you, Bob. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Our pleasure, Mark. And I'm the guy behind the camera. <laughs> I know that. I'll tell you what, gentlemen, it was a great team we put together to do this.
Who would enter an engine in a model car contest and expect to win it? <laughs> it has no wheels. <laughs> hey, you remember the chase scene from Bullet? Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, this is nice. <laughs> hey, this looks like a Chris Stane's diorama. <laughs> Junior modeler, I love to see this. This, this, is, I, yeah, this is your first model, right? Yeah. Oh, this is great. It's the future of America and the future of the hobby. And the future competition. Thank you. 
about this? No. <laughs> Laces are broken in shoes. He can do this. There's <laughs> another piece. This matches another spot right over here. Another nice little battery. Are you sure you don't know anything about this? Well, I found out about afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Begin to unload all of your entrants. Yeah. Tell me which, how many of these events have you entered? This is my fifth one. This is your fifth one. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Good. Yes, I so there's a picture of him standing right there. Because, I mean, if you put your... Or so has been what we call the Hot 100, Hot 150 Clone Pass program. 
where through the membership of the museum we've attempted to identify the top most influential 150 models in the history of our hobby. You know, part of the tradition of the family, that really these days is GSL. So if we can do this, let's proceed the door peacefully. Back here, the plastic players are back this year with the skit that'll split you apart. It's very funny. And then we'll go in for the rest. So thanks for being here. Let's go eat. All right, we're ready to start the uh, annual plastic players presentation. It is called Judgment at GSL. <laughs> Welcome to Judgment at GSL, an exclusive and inside look at the careful, thoughtful, insightful, and critical way all entries are judged here at GSL. First, I'd like to introduce our panel of judges one by one so you'll realize how carefully this panel of experts has been assembled and the critical skills and thorough knowledge each brings to his role as a judge at GSL. If the judges will enter now, I'll introduce each and give a brief description of their personalities and backgrounds. <laughs> serious competitor, he is perfectly suited to the task. Judge 2 is a know-it-all. He only collects kits and has never actually built a market. <laughs> he, he knows every obscure trivia fact about every kit ever produced, but knows nothing about actually building. Judge 3 is also known as Mr. Contrary. He won't agree with anyone, regardless of their position. He likes the prestige, but doesn't like to explain his decisions later on. He is clearly out of his element, but is enamored with being a judge. <laughs> judge 4 is a military modeler and thinks that cars are civilian vehicles. He built one car model in 1961, then began, began building tanks and airplanes so he could blow them up with firecrackers. <laughs> now, please join me in an insider's look at Judgment at GSL. Hey, I hear all you guys tell people you're famous. This is so cool. Being a model car contest judge here at GSL, that makes me famous too, right? You think we get our pictures in the magazines? What color cars should we look at first? <laughs> Let's look at the cars of our friends. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> I want to thank you all for filling in for the regular original Judge Four. He's still at the airport. He's trying to clear security with an exacto knife in his luggage. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris Thames, he's been stuck there for years. <laughs> Hey, I built a car one. It was a 61 Ford. It took me two whole days. <laughs> so what? And it was perfect. We kept it on my life. <laughs> <laughs> Read it the way it's written. <laughs> it went fine in rehearsal. <laughs> Steve! So what? Uh, I built both models in an AMT double drags here in 
one afternoon. Last week. <laughs> Get your line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I read in IPMS magazine that a guy uh, got to win. Or something. Spent a whole 40 hours building a 36 floor. 40 hours? That's way too long. <laughs> Does Sven building a model? Doesn't he have anything else to do with his time? <laughs> yeah, well, some of the contestants I uh, told me they spent 50 and 60 hours on their entries. No way! It's impossible to spend that much time building a model. Who are these people? Okay, look, let's get started. We got a lot of stuff to look at, some hard decisions to make. Here's the classes customs, race cars, black commercial and police cars, and best of show. Winter light commercial. Two, three. Everybody light. <laughs> Shut up. Didn't you read the brand new official rule book? Then you discover we also have special awards for the best use of least chrome. <laughs> best use of pipe cleaner and upholstery material. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Does it have the gotcha factor? Isn't that more important than craftsmanship or detailing? Hey, I got some glue on my finger! <laughs> yeah, this is pretty good. I think it'd be better with different wheels like the ones I brought. <laughs> <laughs> Commercial police car too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
It worked in rehearsal. I told you, Bob, drill the pole bigger. You missed the line. That's okay. I missed Oh, see you. Well, yeah, we'll get, let's get going. I think I'm beginning to like this shiny metal plate paint and stuff. I think it would look kind of keen on an F 117A Nighthawk stealth fighter. And my lips never move. <laughs> trademark of the metal plate. Oh, oh shut, shut up! up! <laughs> Everybody. Oh, oh shut, shut up! up! All right, I think we finally got a winner, but it needs a name. How about the screaming bobtail Red River Shamrocker? Perfect. Clearly a winner. But I don't think... Judge two agrees. How about Judge three? I agree. It's unanimous. Great job. What a team. We really know how to pick them. No, we really know how to build them. <laughs> but I don't think... <laughs> Three. Judge Stevens, thanks, thanks everybody for their help and hopes that we'll all be back next time. And Hurt, we took a look at the play to see who had the best contest entry. We found a car of red and tan, the best we saw since we began. Of course, we fixed it just a bit to fit our idea of a winning kit. Judging fun, and now we see it all comes down to you and me. We've done our job, we've done it well, or so we think, but who can tell? Go and get a project done, because we're coming we'll back in 2001! It is our tradition, when we uh, present the Best of Show Award, to tell you what the top competitors were for that award. We've been doing it for about a decade. The Best of Show Award is that model which, across the board, in all separate categories of construction and design and finish, best exemplifies a scale bigger. When we look at a lot of elements, we struggle, we take the three top models, we put them in a particular area, and we go over them, we agonize, we examine, we turn over, we make all the little things work. It's really fun. This year, there were three models in competition for the GSL 17 Best of Show. Let me tell you what they were. First, was Ray Patrick's 60 Ferrari Custom. The second one was Anthony Carroll's Nova Procom. The third was Augie Scano's 32 and a half Ford Roaster. Now look, any one of those are among the best things I've ever seen at the show, and I've seen it all. Okay, many of you have seen most, if not all. And how do you pick? Think about those models. Each of them, each of them is showing incredible skill, incredible execution. Unbelievable detail, thoughtfulness, hard work, sweat, grunt. Can you imagine? But as Bob told me last night, we have to choose. We can't do duplicate best to show awards or triplicates. Can't do it. So I'm going to make these guys sweat. Put <laughs> you guys to sweat a bit. But in the end, um, it was close. I tell you, it was very close. But in the end, GSL 17 Best of Show goes to Augie Gaston. that are here that are just very, very well done. Hi, I'm Augie Escano. I live in Miami, Florida. I've been building models since I was seven years old. Not good, but I, you know, after a while, it, uh, the more you do, the better you get. So after 60 years, I've retired from competition, but I still love to build models. Since 1989, I'm Tom Kern. I'm from Rochester, New York. I sp spent all my working life as a mechanical designer for Eastman Kodak and fell into this uh, after I retired in 1990. I got the, the idea of doing this from, from a book I read of Gerald Wingrove. 
It was the model cars of Gerald Wingrove. And I had a lot of trouble believing they were actually models, and sure enough, they were. And after a while, I thought, if he can do it, I can do it. So I started out cold. It took three years to do the first experience. It was, it was, a, it was a Packard coupe and a Packard uh, chassis. After they were finished, I came over here to the Duesenberg. I'd always loved Duesenberg. I'd always wanted a Duesenberg model. And so I built up four rolling chassis, one of which finished his life here is this car. Good morning. My name is Dave Cummins. Uh, I am currently about 67 years old, but I've been modeling for about 50 years off and on, more lately in the last 12 years of my retirement. Uh, I had spent about 34 years before that time designing cars in Chrysler styling and then working in engineering on human uh, factors. In my retirement, I have always wanted to redesign and modernize classic automobiles that I've admired over the years, particularly Alfa Romeo and Bugatti. There have been others, of course, but these are the ones that I happen to be showing today. Back in the 30s, when uh, these cars were originally designed, who knows what... We sold the promise. Big Daddy was one of my most favorite people, and um, I know his spirit is here tonight. I love the guy. And I was so looking forward to being with him here. And it was just so sad that he died just a couple of weeks ago. We had a lot, a lot of fun together, a lot of laughs. And with all of that, you know, those of you who knew him, he was a great genius. And as they were originally presented. Please look at this. This is the first time this mall has been seen since 1963 or so. It is painted, rubbed out. Most of the interior is in it. There is no chassis, no tires, and there was never an engine, despite what Jim told me once. <laughs> well, there is. Here's I the model. Oh, yeah. Picked up some dust. Boy, does that bring back memories. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very honored. With that in mind, 1962 Revell Pactra Southeast Regional Paint Winner. On behalf of the National Model Car Builders Museum and the GSL International Model Car Championship, we would like to present your Royal with a certificate in recognition of your significant contributions to the model car hobby and to the ho for hobbies in general, and also to present to you a copy, signed copy of our GSL book on the first 15 years of this championship and express our great appreciation to you for all that you've done for all of us. Thank you, so Thank you for being here with us. Uh, but it's totally enthusiastic about the club's GSL outing. Let's join them as they get ready. What happened to you? I was juggling my exacto knives. <laughs> Doctors say I'll be okay, but I think they put my thumbs back on upside down. <laughs> well, just be careful handling the models. You know how clumsy you can be. Don't treat them like you treat our resin castings. He's getting so clumsy, we're going to have to farm the work out to South Korea. <laughs> you, you can still drive to Salt Lake, right? As well as I ever could. Man, I'm pumped. We're going to kick some B-U-T-T. -T. I guess that takes care of the target NASCAR racing. Right? <laughs> so this year, we're going to do dragsters in the new class. I'm stoked. We're going to kick A-S-P-H-E-L-T. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the Melrose Missile. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> could take over a table and display so many entries on it that the judges would have to let us win. <laughs> but we'd have to build at least two dozen championship quality models. I think we have a diorama. <laughs> Looks good, but will those judge guys like it? 
We can't lose. You just hold your arms out there like staging lanes. <laughs> this will beat anything Roger U does this year. <laughs> Mr. Kern won the Gerald Wingrove Scratch Building Award, the Best Detail Award, the Best Interior Award, and Best of Show. Used to it. You get used to looking at it. 